Paris, the city of lights, is getting ready to shine. Athletes will be looking to set new records at the Summer Games, and for the first time, track and field athletes will be competing on a purple track. Millions of people around the globe will watch the Paris Olympics, anticipating record-breaking performances on the track. Mondo, the track's manufacturer, believes their new design will make these records possible. Naturally, I had to see it for myself. So I traveled to Paris to check it out. But here's the thing, breaking records involves more than just having a fast track. Let me explain why Paris might not see as many records as Mondo expects. One of the most fascinating debates in the sport of track and field is the speed of the track itself. Many athletes believe that a fast track can lead to quicker times and the breaking of records. In fact, some athletes underestimate their performances by attributing their success to the speed of the track. A psychological illusion, if you ask me. This is the Stade de France, built for the 1998 FIFA World Cup. This stadium has witnessed countless glorious moments. Zidane at his finest comes to mind. During my visit, Mondo was in the process of finalizing what they claim to be their fastest track yet, a redesign from their previous record-breaking track at the Tokyo Olympic Games. But before we dive into the details of the beautiful new proper track and evaluate Mondo's claims, Let's define what we mean by a fast track. Modern surfaces are significantly faster compared to the old cinder surfaces, which are now a thing of the past. The last Olympic track made of cinder was used in Tokyo in 1964. For a track to be considered fast, it must excel in two key areas, energy return and propulsion. When an athlete steps on the track, the surface compresses slightly under their weight similar to a mini trampoline. This compression allows energy to be returned to the athlete as they lift their foot to make their next step. A track that can deliver more energy return enables athletes to maintain their speed without expending additional energy, allowing them to run faster. The concept of propulsion is about how effectively an athlete can push off the track. When a runner's foot pushes against the track, they want maximum forward motion and minimal backward sliding, similar to the difference between running on ice and running on a grippy surface. Good propulsion means that almost all the force a runner applies to push backward effectively moves them forward. This is influenced by the spikes and the texture of the track, which work together to prevent slipping and maximize forward motion. Here's the hot take. A track that maximizes energy return closer to 100% and one that improves traction to reduce slippage ought to lead to faster times and potentially world records for those in world record shape. Mondo has worked on this aspect with its new track compared to the track in Tokyo. It has made improvements using AI and athlete consultation. While I have no reason to doubt Mondo's claim, and probably it's a better surface than the one used in Tokyo, that doesn't necessarily mean that new records will be set on the track. I've reviewed many studies published by Mondo in collaboration with academics, and most of them barely touch on track speed. Instead, they focus more on durability, chemical components, and engineering quality. The thing you have to remember is that peer-reviewed studies require a high level of confidence in the science to ensure that the results are just not noise in the data. If the track was statistically proven to be faster, we would have likely seen published research showing this evidence. Another way to interpret this is that while the track may be indeed faster, the improvement may not be significant enough to make a definitive statement. Even if this is the fastest track on planet Earth, its speed is just one factor in pursuing records. Many variables come into play and it's important for us to maintain a realistic perspective when it comes to breaking world records. The athlete must be physically and mentally prepared in peak condition. If that's a given, we can then look at other elements. The equipment athletes use also matters. Over time, we've seen improvements in track spikes and many believe we are currently in an era of super spikes. The difference may be marginal, but for athletes with superhuman abilities, these small gains can be crucial. This has been particularly evident in marathons where the right shoes can make a significant difference. Environmental conditions and stadium design are also crucial components in pursuing records. The gold standard for fast tracks today is Hayward Field in Eugene. Though its surface is not a Mondo track, 
it's often considered the fastest in the world by athletes and pundits. Numerous great times and world records have been set there. Let's take a look at Haywood Field. Notice the section that allows wind to freely enter the stadium, often providing tailwinds that aid performance. Sometimes these tailwinds exceed the two meters per second allowable limit, offering more assistance than permitted. A key thing to recognize about the fast times at Hayward Field or tracks at major events like the Olympics is the timing of athlete preparation. When athletes compete in a national championship, the Olympics, or the World Championship, they are usually at their best or nearing peak condition. These factors contribute to the perception of a fast track, creating an illusion that the track is responsible for outstanding performances. The Stade de France, which will host the Paris Olympics, has a different stadium design compared to more open stadiums. There are no open sections, so we are unlikely to experience strong winds. This differs from places like Hayward Field, which is known for its more variable wind conditions. We can use the 2003 World Championships held in the Stade de France as a guide. We had negligible wind readings, most nearing zero meters per second. If we anticipate similar wind readings, it means the conditions may not be as favorable for breaking records, especially records that require tailwinds. Let's take a look back at the last Olympics in Tokyo. At that time, Mondo claimed Tokyo was the fastest track they've ever made, but only three world records were broken. Yulimar Rojas in the triple jump, Sidney McLaughlin and Karsten Varham in the 400 meter hurdles. The thing about these records is that the athletes who broke them are generational talents, indicating the need for exceptional athletes to break these records beyond the speed of the track. I can't recall an Olympics in the last 30 years without marketing hype around the speed of the track. So while there's a buzz around this new Mondo track, we must consider all the factors, including weather conditions. For instance, Paris can have variable weather conditions, from hot and ideal to downpours, which are less conducive to breaking records. When we get to the Olympics, if records aren't falling, be sure to look beyond the speed of the track. As we've established, multiple factors are at play, and some records are exceptionally hard to break. They need generational talents in peak condition. Let me know your thoughts on the track and the likelihood of records being broken.